Hi, I'm Eric Spensley. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how we built this art easel on Spensley Design Co. We picked up this maple board from our local hardwood dealer that is S2S, meaning it's been surfaced on both the top and the bottom. But since we don't have a joiner, we also asked them to flatten one edge for us too, since the outside edges are very rough. As we break down the pieces into their rough size, we want to remind you that we have a free cut list available on our website linked in the description below so you can build this for yourself. But if you don't have a large maple board like this, you can definitely do this entire project using 2x4 lumber from your local home center too. We used our circular saw and speed square to cut our pieces down to rough length and used the crosscut sled on our table saw to clean up the ends since the table saw will give a much better surface finish than the circular saw ever will. Once the pieces were cut to length, we prepped our table saw to rip down the three legs. Now our first pass was slightly larger than our desired width, so we could come back with another pass and clean up the edge. Now eight quarter maple like this is incredibly hard to cut. You have to feed it a lot slower on a contractor or table saw like we have here, so just be careful and make sure that you have a super clean and super sharp blade. After the first pass, we adjusted our fence over to the final width and made one more pass on each leg. And since this isn't taking as much material off, the cut is much easier and will produce a much better surface finish. And while we finish cutting these legs, we want to remind you to hit that like button below and let us know what you think of this easel down in the comments. To cut the taper on two of the legs, we grabbed a small piece of scrap wood and adjusted our miter gauge for our table saw to 10 degrees and made a small cut on the scrap. We then brought the scrap piece over to two of our legs and marked where we wanted to cut them. Back at the table saw, we grabbed our tapering jig, which we have a whole video showing how we made it linked in the cards above, and lined the marks we made with the edge of the jig. And after tightening the leg down, we ran it through our table saw to get a perfect taper. Now make sure to keep those cut off pieces though. We'll need them in just a minute. With the tapers cut, we made marks where we need to drill our hole for the bolt. And hey, if you made it this far in the build, you must like it. So do us a favor and hit that subscribe button below. Not only does that help us produce more of these awesome videos for free, but YouTube will make sure that you never miss any of our future projects. Thanks. We used the scraps from our tapered cut to create a flat surface to drill into, and use our pocket hole drill bit to go all the way through the maple. Now this definitely would have been easier on a drill press, but since we don't have one at the time, the cordless drill will have to work just fine. To hold everything together, we used a hex bolt, two washers and a nut for the end. Just slide the washer over the bolt, insert it through the three legs, add another washer, and then lock it all in place with the nut. You can now see that the legs pivot with ease. Now on to the canvas tray. We follow the same process as before, where we ripped down the pieces to rough width on the first pass, and then made a second pass to bring everything down to the exact dimensions. To create the recessed portion of the tray, we need to hog out the middle of this piece. Now if you had a set of dado blades for your table saw, or even a router table, you could have done this a lot faster. But since we don't, we're just going to take about 25 passes with our regular table saw blade. And after each pass, we move the fence over about 1 16th of an inch until the middle was removed. The only problem is this left a very rough surface, so we'll have to go and sand that down before finishing. We just finished cutting the horizontal canvas tray and I think it's a little too big. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go off of the plans I had made and we're gonna cut a little bit off of this edge here. But don't worry, the plans that we have online are updated. Well, somehow we lost the footage of the first cut, but here's the second pass where we got it down to the final dimension that we wanted. We grabbed our drill with a bit that was just slightly larger than our bolt and clamped the two pieces together. After drilling a small pilot hole, we used a block of wood to help hold the drill straight and drilled through the two pieces making sure the scrap block was underneath to help prevent any tear out. And with those holes drilled, you can easily slide the bolt through them to hold them together. 
To finish everything up, we use a quarter inch roundover bit in our cordless router to jazz up the edges. And honestly, if you're still watching, I think you owe it to us to hit that thumbs up button below. Thanks! Oh yeah, this gets super messy, so wear a respirator and make your lungs smile. After we tossed a few coats of water-based polyurethane on to protect the wood, we could assemble it. The tray works with a friction fit where a wing nut is tightened on each side to provide enough pressure to keep the tray from moving. This design works great because you can easily raise and lower the canvas to your desired height whether you're sitting or standing. The very last thing that we needed to do was attach a chain to keep the back leg from potentially sliding out during use. We grabbed some hooks and chain from our home center and first pre-drilled a small hole then came back to twist the hook in. We put the hooks on both the back of the tray and the center leg. And with the hooks twisted in, we could attach the chain. Now we intentionally left the chain long so it has plenty of room to be maneuvered depending on the height of the canvas tray. And with that, the back leg was secured and this bad boy was finished. Well, we really hope that you love this project. It's a little bit different than some of the other things we usually make with some furniture, but it was a lot of fun. And we hope this video inspired you to make your own easel. 